and welcome. I am Adeshawa Odushoga. Nearly three months after the country signed the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, Nigeria has closed down its land borders with neighboring countries to control the smuggling of rice and illegal amounts of light hams. The border closure aroused criticism from many Nigerians who are lamenting about the cost of food prices and the expenses for business owners. The closure of borders appears to be a blessing in disguise to local rice farmers. Stakeholders in the food and agricultural industry says their businesses are thiefed. Since the closure, locally produced rice is now the favorite of many, as the prices of available foreign rice has increased and remained unaffordable for many. Farm produce from neighboring nations such as Benin Republic, Togo, Ghana, meant for the Nigerian market rot away daily due to the government's policy. In 2011, Nigeria spent 25.4 trillion naira annually importing food items into the country. Five years after, a different report put the figure of the four major imported commodities, which are wheat, rice, sugar, and fish, at $11 billion, which is equivalent to 4 trillion naira in the local currency. The country over the years has been spending over 358 billion naira every 12 months to foreign countries in the name of rice importation. As much as there are positive sides to the land borders closure, it is not without its excesses. The free movement of people, goods and services is part of the principles of the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, but the border closure is contradicting its policy. Also in July 2019, you'd recall that Nigeria recently signed the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which was recently alongside 54 out of 55 African countries. The border closure has since highlighted how difficult it will be to establish a real rather than aspirational African wide free trade regime. Despite the border closure, the just concluded Lagos International Trade Fair attracted more foreign investors ranging from Indians, Chinese, Italians, among others, as compared to the 2018 edition. During a tour at the trade fair, I spoke to a number of foreign investors, and here is what they had to say about doing business in Nigeria. The trade relationship between Nigeria and China is taking a good shape. As the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry recently signed a memorandum of understanding with the China Shandong Export Commodities to foster bilateral relations between both countries. This agreement was done as part of the activities of the ongoing Lagos International Trade Fair to declare the China Pavilion open. Shandong is one of the leading economies among Chinese provinces and has been one of the biggest national pavilion at the trade fair for many years. Very happy to say that China's economy is also doing very well. In the first three quarters of this year, China's GDP grows at a speed of 6.2%. Comparatively speaking, uh, vertically, it's slower than China's uh, past performance. But uh, horizontally, we are very happy to see that China is still one of the growing, fastest growing economy in the world. 6.2% is not small. Total trade between China and Nigeria stood at 8.6 billion US dollar in the first half of 2019. These ties between our two countries continue to work stronger on growing bilateral trade relations and strategic cooperation. Many Chinese investors and enterprises are based in Nigeria, operating in various sectors, including oil and gas, manufacturing, agriculture, steel processing, and construction, among others. With the China's Belt and Road Initiative seeking to bridge infrastructure gap and accelerate economic growth across African countries like Nigeria, the Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Mudashu Obasa, says this will further enhance economic diversification in Nigeria. No doubt, the relations between the Federal Republic of Nigeria and People's Republic of China have expanded on growing bilateral trade and strategic cooperation. Nigeria and China may both be developing countries, but one fact that is not disputable is that we maintain long friendship after establishment of diplomatic ties of the two countries. Why federal government efforts to shift from the 
economy away from oil dependence have largely failed. State and local government, at least on the surface, seems committed in working with the Chinese firms to increase investment in enterprises that will help generate a growth-oriented, diversified economy. The 2019 Lagos International Trade Fair attracted more Chinese investors with over 200 exhibitors on ground compared to 45 who participated in 2018. Many of these exhibitors are looking forward to greater business investment in the Nigerian economy. Actually, I see uh, before coming to Nigeria, I know that Nigeria has a big uh, population, around 250 million. So this is big market, big potentials. Uh, so we hope that uh, after we finish this exhibition, we will get some contacts so we can have potential projects in the future. We, we want to show our product. We want to bring good quality LED screen to, into Nigeria. So that's why we set up this stand. We want to show people, because right now in Nigeria, uh, like churches, advertising companies, they all need our LED screen. We are here to tell this part of the world that we exist, that first of its time in Nigeria, you could have an LED screen, walking to a shop, walking into an office. Because we are one of the biggest supplier for the salon product for more than 20 years. Our brand name is popular in Nigerian market. Uh, all people, they know new game with quality product. We are coming to Nigeria for uh, expedition to uh, do advertisement for our product. Ease of business is very nice, it's good. It's not at all a difficult problem at all. Uh, whether it's importation, bringing in goods, selling it out, it's good. It's not difficult at all. Me, like, me being a foreigner coming here, no, it's not. I have been like, uh, the people here are very receptive to us and very friendly and cordial to us and things are working out. Every year there is an improvement. Every year we see things are improving, things are more organized. This time also I can see parking is a lot is very nice, the cleanliness is very nice, the staff is very uh, helpful. So every year we see some changes, we see all the changes for goods. Our expectation is just to advertise, uh, to get some sales a little bit. The main aim is to uh, grow awareness of our brands that we are a Nigerian based company and we are giving employments to hundreds of Nigerians as well. So Nigerians should support Nigerian entities. We have very high expectations. We are using this as a platform, you know, and we have a lot of people who are coming from different countries as well. So we are making trying and making sure that, you know, our products are even spread outside the country as well. The bilateral relations between Nigeria and China have expanded ongoing bilateral trade and strategic cooperations. Just last month, the Asian country signed a 629 million US dollar facility with the Lagos state government for the completion of the Lekki Deep Seaport project, which has been under construction for many years. Further discussing the effects of the border closure, I am now being joined by Director General of Nigeria's Employers Consultative Association, Timothy Olawale. Thank you for joining us on the program, sir. Yes. Now, you understand that since about three months now, Nigeria shuts down its borders from neighboring countries. How would you react to this? Well, there are, many, there are two sides to the issue. The first one is the reason for government closing it, which has a benefit for the country. The other side is the implication or the effect of the closure on businesses and the generality of Nigerians, which are not too positive. The first side that I said, the first flip side of the coin, which is government's reason for closing it, is also one of the issues that as representative body of organized businesses, we have actually been complaining about over the years. Nigeria being destination for small good goods, Nigeria becoming a dumping ground for goods that are small good across our borders, which is also killing businesses. And our neighbors, unfortunately, especially Benin Republic, Chad Republic, and the others, are not respecting the rules of uh, multinational, multilateral and bilateral agreements, which is so unfortunate. So government had no option other than to seal our borders so as to rein in all these nefarious activities that are also killing our economy. And the positives there is number one, there is increased revenue to government through the custom. Number two, 
smuggling has drastically reduced. Number three, you even discover that the cost, the sum total of government expenditure on fuel subsidy has also dropped because Nigeria is also not just subsidizing fuel for Nigerians, but for the entire West African sub-region through smuggling of petroleum products across our borders. So it is as good as that. But when you look at the flip side, in the course of implementation, you discover that some other challenges are scrubbed up. And one of it is, for instance, the ease with which the little goods that we export gets out of our border. It's been a coolian. It's like the proverbia camera passing through the eye of the needle. And this has actually ad adversely affected businesses with millions of naira lost on a daily basis. And what we had advised is that while implementing the closure, the partial closure of border, government, especially the customs service, should also be sensitive to this adverse effect by making operations at the border seamless. We are not saying you should not restrict, we are not saying you should not do due process or screen, but make it seamless and minimize the damages to business. We also have even businesses that are dealing in perishable goods, especially agro products. A situation where agro products that have one or two days lifespan spends over one week across the, uh, 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 at the border to cross over. And before they are even cleared, the goods are, are damaged. That is also an adverse effect on businesses which is leading to colossal loss and capable of crippling business. And of course, the effect again that has to do with the generality of Nigerian masses is what you and me can feel. Before the border closure, the assumption by government is that we are self-sufficient in food production. And it's far from the truth. And that's why artificial scarcity has reared its head now. What you discover is that even a bag of rice that used to cost between 14 and 15,000 naira before the closure of the border. And mind you, rice happens to be the staple food of Nigerians. Now cost between 25 and 26,000 naira. So a jump from 14 to 25,000 naira, which means Nigerians are worse off for it. And if your minimum wage is 30,000 naira, which has yet to be paid to many Nigerians, and your household consumes a, an average, in the average, a bag of rice in a month, and you use that to buy a bag of rice, what is left for you to even cook the stew? to eat the rice with. And that's on a lighter mood, but it's very serious. What's left for you to transport yourself to and fro your place of work, to take care of medical bills of your family, and to take care of other things. So this is a very serious, even though it looks trivial, it's a serious matter which calls for concern. And that calls for the issue of we are not yet sufficient. How do we bridge the gap? Why we know that it is for the good of Nigeria economy for us to embrace backward integration and also to patronize Nigerian made or grown rice. But we, are, we still have that challenge which must be addressed. Same thing goes for poultry farm uh, products. Our members even in the hospitality sector have said now to even have chicken to feed their guests in the hotels has become a challenge. And a cattle of chicken now has tripled in price. This has also thrown up the cost of doing business. So what we are saying is that as we implement to make sure that we go towards self-sufficiency, we must also look back and say what are those challenges that could cause further hardship for Nigerians that has been thrown up by the border closure. What are we going to do about it? We might not have ready answer now, but that's why government exists, to provide solutions to challenges. Those are my initial responses or, uh, to the issue of border closure.
It says that the government yes. under the border closure barely three months since they signed the African Free Trade Agreement. Are we not looking at clash of policies here? Well, Afri -continental, African Continental Trade uh, Agreement is laudable, we have said so. But you know what we have also said is that for Nigeria to benefit from it, our businesses must be competitive. In other words, we must be able to, government must create an enabling factor, an environment for businesses to thrive, to be able to compete effectively with their counterparts across Africa. That is one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is that government must enforce the respect for rule of origin to ensure that goods that are coming in are indeed from Africa and not that these African nations or our neighboring countries are being used as conduit pipe for developed nations and Europe to use them to dump their goods in Nigeria, which is capable of killing a local industry. And the way it's even connected with this issue of border closure is very simple. Nigeria needs to be competitive. We cannot close our border forever. At one point or the other, it might not be in January 31st, but at one point or the other, we must open the borders. And that brings us to what we need to do. What is it that we are doing to make sure that those challenges that necessitated the closure of border in the first instance are addressed and dealt with? How do we correct them so that when we open the border, they will not repeat themselves? How do we ensure? Because there has been argument that, look, if uh, security agencies that are policing our borders, customs and immigration are efficient, we wouldn't have made to close the borders. How do we ensure efficiency so that they will be able to perform their job diligently to arrest all those situations? Even if it is capacity that is their problem, how do we ensure that they have adequate capacity to be able to police our borders, our lengthy borders? How do we ensure that when we open the borders, they can work effectively with community that are bordering the uh, Nigerian borders that resides along the borders so that they can support them in policing the border. How do we also ensure that if they have logistics issue, we provide adequate logistics for them now to be able to work effectively and so on and so forth. There are lots of issues that miss attention. Now is the time for us to address them so that they'll be more efficient and be able to perform their role when the borders are open. Now, the trade fair has come and yes. gone, and it is no doubt that it, it attracted more foreign investors from across the world. And this goes to yes. show how attractive the economy has been in the last few years. But wouldn't the, the border closure further be a threat to their investment in the country? Well, it's, it has a flip side as well. The first thing I think we should look at is the, those who actually participated at the trade fair, where are the goods from? I've taken, for instance, the issue of tire that were displayed there. They are all imported goods. What is it that we are going to do to ensure that just as they have come in to exhibit their goods, they are encouraged to be able to say, yes, we want to establish our factories in Nigeria or resuscitate our factories? Because Michelin and Dunlop were very active industrial uh, operators in Nigeria before. What can we do to ensure that they resuscitate these uh, factories so that they continue to produce in Nigeria, create employment, and also help our uh, foreign exchange? The same thing goes for every other sectors of the economy and other products that were exhibited at the uh, trade fair. Almost 80% of the goods are from outside the country. And then we should go beyond them coming in periodically to exhibit to take advantage of our massive population, but to also establish industries here and produce here. That should be the long-term uh, target. And that's what will actually grow our economy and benefit our nation. Now, in your own opinion, sir, what do you think is the alternative to the border closure? What do you think the government needs to do otherwise? Uh, you know, I've, I've explained that, that look, 
what we need to do is to now work behind the scene to build the capacity of the customs and the immigration to make sure that their efficiency is there. Basically, their inefficiency in time pass and lack of effectiveness in what they are supposed to do statutorily that necessitated the closure of the border. Now is the time for us to build up their capacity. Now is the time for us to put appropriate framework in place to ensure that when the borders are open, we won't need to close it a second time. Well, that was uh, the Director General of Ni Nigeria's um, Employers Consultative Association, Mr. Timothy Olawale. We'll now go on a short break now. I'll we'll be right back. Welcome back. The Nigeria's Employers Consultative Association, NECA, says that with the rate of many companies are shutting down, coupled with the lack of jobs for Nigeria's increasing population, the unemployment rate in the country may climb to 33.5% from the current 33.1% by 2020. Director General NECA Timothy Olawale called on the federal government to ensure that the fiscal and monetary institutions churn out policies that focus on not only sustainable enterprise development, but also on job creation. Uh, well, we still have the director on standby talking to us on the uh, unemployment rate in Nigeria. Now, director, yeah. let me ask you. You recently gave a report that unemployment in Nigeria is soon to climb to 33.5% yeah. by the year 2020. Yeah. And we are beginning to see that foreign countries like that, like the UK in a recent publication, is seeking the health workers from other countries. And currently, reports have it that 1,000 mm. Nigerian doctors are working in the UK already. Are we not expecting a not chaos in Nigeria? Well, the reality is that it's not only health sector. It's all sectors of the economy. And that has to do with the standard of living in Nigeria. The responsibility of government is to ensure the welfare of the citizens. And where that is not being done, naturally, our physiological need, according to Abraham Maslow, must be fulfilled. And people will look for ways of surviving of, for a better life. And that is exactly what is happening. That's why you have several Nigerians, both young and old, migrating to Canada. Not only the UK, many are seeking greener pastures in the US. It's even as bad as many of our people trying to go to the Arab countries, Dubai, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and so on and so forth in the Middle East. And until governments start fixing the welfare of the people, by prioritizing the welfare of the people, making life meaningful for the ordinary Nigerians, this trend will still continue. And it's not today that brain drain started. And of course, we know the implication. It means in the health sector that you have used as an example, there will be paucity of skilled manpower. And that also has to do, and it will have adverse implication on the well-being of people and the life expectancy also may dip. The same way, if you look at other sectors, but the bottom line is that government must take the welfare of Nigerian citizens as top on their priority. Security, health, the education of its people, and talking about education, that's why many Nigerians are traveling out to acquire education. We thank God there is the little lease of life with regards to ASU industry action now. But there are still stress hanging there. For how long are we going to be living like this? Even the schools, the infrastructures are decayed. The lecturers and the staff are not happy. There are one issue or the other or crisis that are looming. There is also the issue of deficit in health infrastructure. That's why you have medical tourism. Even those that are working in the different government hospitals are not happy because they don't have adequate equipment to work. Even that's demotivating. So they rather work in a place where they can give their best and achieve results. Many deaths are recorded in the course of their jobs, not because they don't know what to do, but they don't have the wherewithal to do what is right. So they are not happy working. So it's not only about greener pasture, it's also about the right environment. So 
And these are things that government needs to start thinking about and fixing. Well, Director Imos, thank you very much for joining my us pleasure. on the program. Thanks. We hope to see you next time. Well, that's it on Money Matters. Thank you for joining us in yet another edition of the program. I am Adesha Wao Dushoga. See you next time.